Step four, optical fibers. Let's have a look what a typical uh, optical fiber consists of. On the outer layer, we've got the jacket. And this is to protect the inside components of the fiber. Then the next in line is the buffer. Now the buffer is there also for protection, but it can also bundle uh, multiple optical fibers. Then we've got the cladding over here. And this is the material that is responsible for reflecting, um, reflecting uh, light back and keeping it contained within the inside, which is the core. Also cladding serves uh, as a form of protection and prevents crosstalk, because if you have two uh, um, cores next to each other, then light can easily escape to the other core. So you must separate them somehow, and that's the purpose of the cladding. So these two components are the ones that are optically important parts. Core is the one that carries the light signal, and it has some uh, refractive index NC, whereas, uh, sorry, NF for, uh, NF for fiber, whereas cladding has a smaller refractive index NC, and that's the one that is responsible for uh, reflecting light back into the core and keeping it contained inside the fiber. And there are two main types of fibers. One is the multimode fiber over here. So you can see that here the modes are represented by different spatial beams bouncing inside the fiber. And single mode fibers, which are so narrow that there's only one mode uh, permitted to travel uh, inside the fiber. So let, let's look at multimode fibers uh, first. As we said, here all of these rays, they represent various modes of light traveling inside the fiber. And what's important for multimode fibers is the angle of acceptance. This is the angle represented by this uh, gray cone over here. And if the light comes traveling inside the fiber within this light cone, then it will couple to the fiber and uh, undergo uh, many internal reflections uh, inside the fiber and basically be carried inside and be guided by the fiber. But if the incident angle of the um, light is such that it is outside of the acceptance uh, cone, then it will just hit the cladding and get refracted outside and get absorbed. So it will not be uh, coupled to the fiber. So let's apply Snell's law and actually calculate what is the maximum permissible uh, permitted angle such that we couple to the fiber. So we have the following scenario. In here we actually have two interfaces. One interface is the usual between the fiber with refractive index NF and the cladding with refractive index NC. But now we also have to consider the light coming into the fiber so we also consider refractive index of some material that's outside of the fiber, and we will denote it by Ni. And we've got these three angles. We are looking for the maximum uh, theta, maximum permitted angle. And uh, if we multiply it by two, this is called the acceptance angle. And we want this angle to be such that when the uh, light gets refracted into the fiber and then hits the cladding, it gets um, reflected completely and totally back into, inside the fiber. So this angle we set to theta c, which is the critical angle needed for total internal reflection. Using basic trig trigonometry, then we know that this angle of refraction at the surface of the fiber and whatever material is outside of the fiber has to be 90 degrees minus theta c. And we all know from previous step that if we take the sign of this critical angle, so this angle over here, it has to be equal to the ratio of the refractive indices of the cladding and the fiber. So sine theta c is equal to nc over nf. And we continue using our Snell's law. So at this interface between the fiber and the outside material, we write that ni the refractive index of the outside material times sine theta max has to be equal to the refractive index of the fiber times sine 90 degrees minus theta c, which is the angle of refraction over here, measured with respect to the normal of the surface 
which in this case is given by this horizontal dashed line. And we can simplify using trigonometric identity. Sine 90 degrees minus theta c is just equal to the cosine of that angle theta c. And we can use another trigonometric identity where we use the fact that sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the angle has to be equal to 1. So cosine of theta c is just equal to 1 minus sine squared theta c, the whole expression uh, square rooted. And using the expression that we have over here for the critical angle, we can just substitute an expression for sine, the, sine squared theta c, which is just nc squared over nf squared. So finally, we have the following expression. Multiplying this by nf, we get that the ni times sine theta max is equal to the square root of nf squared minus nc squared. And this gives us the uh, theta max, the maximum angle of acceptance, and therefore also the cone of acceptance. And this number on the left-hand side, this product of the refractive index times the max sine of the maximum acceptance angle is known as numerical aperture. And the higher the numerical aperture is, the better we can couple to the fiber, meaning that this uh, incident angle over here, which we are calling theta max, is allowed to be larger. So, let, what are some properties of multimode fibers? Well, we said that their diameter is much larger uh, than the wavelength of the light. And typically, they've got diameters larger than 10 uh, micrometers, and they can go up to something like 200 micrometers. So we said in order to describe their behavior, it is enough to consider light traveling as a, as a particle, traveling in straight lines and using basic trigonometry. So we can use geometric optics, which we have been doing so far, in order to derive some useful properties of the multimode fiber. Second, the light inside travels at different angles, meaning that it can carry multiple modes at the same time. But what this causes is because the path lengths of the various uh, uh, paths um, uh, of the various light rays uh, differ, we get mode dispersion. And we will describe that in a later lesson and look at it more closely. And such a fiber, because of mode dispersion, is more suited for short distances. So meaning inside office networks or campus networks. And also it is relatively cheap to manufacture, mainly because it's uh, uh, quite thick. On the other hand, a single mode fiber can carry only a single mode of light. So there's only one ray traveling at it, uh, in one direction like this. And now the diameter is uh, typically smaller than 10 micrometers. And just to give you an idea how thin that is, the human hair is usually larger than 20 micrometers. There's a large variance, but it's between 20 and perhaps 200 micrometers. So they're extremely, extremely thin. And because they are so thin, it is no longer possible to describe them as uh, using uh, geometric optics. We have to resort to using electromagnetic uh, theory and Maxwell's equations. But because they are so thin and there's only a single mode, there is no mode dispersion. And uh, th th uh, that is why they allow for very high uh, uh, rate of transfer of data. And therefore, they are suitable for long distance communications. They have to be boosted by repeaters approximately every 50 kilometers. But we will see how that can be achieved in a later lesson. But because they are so thin, they're quite expensive to produce. And a small, small note at the end, the first transatlantic fiber optic cable, which was called TAT8, was laid in uh, uh, 1988 between Tuckerton, New Jersey, and then it traveled uh, across the Atlantic and then split into the UK and France. And it was um, uh, constructed at a cost of approximately 335 million US dollars. And it was retired in 2002. So it was predicted that uh, the bandwidth of this fiber optic cable would last for a long time and perhaps never be reached. The bandwidth was uh, 280 megabits per second, which can carry around 40,000 phone circuits simultaneously. 
and this capacity was reached in 18 months. Now, this just demonstrates how quickly, how quickly we can consume data and how quickly we, we, we need to transfer data and the size of the data that we need to transfer.